riches to start. I shall reign triumphant. Welcome back to Villain Review episode 65, and today we are looking at Master Cyclonus from the TV show Stormhawks. Shout out to Goblin Tribute Maker for suggesting Cyclonus. And if you have a villain you want me to review, make sure to leave them down in the comments. Also, real quick, if you want to know early which villain I'm going to review, go ahead and follow my Instagram, link in bio. How good of a villain is Cyclonus? Let's break her down and find out. This should help remind our resistors who really holds the power on Atmos. So the Master Cyclonus we see throughout the show is just the latest in a long line of Master Cyclonus, Cyclonis, Cycluni, I don't know. Inheriting the title from a pretty young age after her father tragically passed away in an accident, Cyclonus was left with an evil legacy to uphold, and uphold it she did. Wanting to focus on expanding the empire, Cyclonus decided the best way to do this was through force and conquest. Okay, look, uh, let me talk about the things that I like about this origin first. I think one of the saving factors for Cyclonus is the fact that her father does die in that tragic accident. It brings a whole new layer of sympathy to Cyclonus, because losing a parent is obviously never a good thing, even if they're more evil than Luke in that episode 8 flashback. I also like how Cyclonus got the job at a young age, because we all know people in power who are young always tend to, uh... How do I say this? Go downwards? Besides that though, the origin's kinda bland. I feel like if the show dedicated more time to Cyclonus, they could really make this origin special, but I just feel like there's a lot of stuff missing. For example, I get that her whole family has been evil and all that stuff, but why does she want to go with Conquest? Why does she even want to expand the Empire in the first place? It seems like such a generic motive, and I never really liked the whole power hungry, oh we must take over and dominate scheme. I guess you could say, oh well, that's how she was raised, and that's how her parents were, but why were her parents like that? It just seems like kind of a cop-out to avoid explaining it. Let me guess, you're that pesky Sky Knight, aren't you a little young? In Cyclonus though, we see another villain where character is their best category. Being a young ruler, Cyclonus hits a nice balance of being an inexperienced ruler and someone who's trying her best to make things look like she's the real deal. I feel like for Cyclonus, there's a level of insecurity around her age, so she might try to act like overtly evil and exhibit so much authority to where people just ignore it. And honestly, it might work because there's this big lizard dude, right? And within 10 seconds, he goes from scary like this kind of lizard to stupid this kind of lizard. One thing I really need to touch on is the performance by Lenore Zan. I really think that this is the best part of the character because I really like how she's played. I really like her voice because it's actually pretty unique and it has such a cunning and just sinister tone. In general, Cyclonus is played with sort of a smugness, and it really makes for a good balance of likable evil. Cyclonus is also really into herself, and she has zero tolerance for failure, two attributes that might be pretty common in a dictator-esque villain. She's also very unpredictable, and I really like that about her. Although, I do think it's funny how every time she talks, she makes it seem like everything's a big deal and evil and epic. It's, it's not a complaint, I just think it's funny. Hey, yo, Master C, what up, girl? Welcome, and take a seat as we discuss. All right, all right cool. I was told to uh, come and get your Chipotle order, so uh, so what you want? Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna devise a plan so sin- So what you want, like a burrito? Yes, but this burrito will be so evil that even Pinto? the devil himself would be afraid to indulge its enjoyment. Do you want Pinto? And once our mission is accomplished, the world will see Pinto my or order, nah. and they will cower before it. They will see that Master Cyclonus so, orders no the Pinto? best burritos in the entire world. And yeah, Pinto. And as for the Stormhawks, they'll pay for what they've done. Unfortunately, I don't really think Cyclonus has too many good scenes. Well, it feels like she only even has a few scenes. She doesn't, but it feels like it. Kind of going off of what I said in the last category, most of Cyclonus's scenes are just her standing still and being menacing while giving a speech. It gets kind of old, and there's a desperate need for a variety which we never really get. I'm not saying that it's all she does, but it sure feels like it. She gives so many speeches, she just feels like a Far Cry villain, and not the good kind, the kind of annoying kind. Secondly, I really wish the show involved her more. Like, girl, you gotta get involved. She's the main villain of the show, 
but she's only in like five or six episodes. And sometimes that's only for like a short scene. I think a lot of older shows like this didn't really put a lot of time and effort into the villains and therefore delegated them to these one-off appearances just to remind us they still exist. That being said, there are some moments, okay? Uh, they're not all bad. Like I said, I think Cyclonus has personality, so those evil monologues aren't really terrible or anything, they can actually be pretty enjoyable. If I had to pick one scene though as her best, it would probably be her fight at the end of episode 2. <laughs> The fight is cool because it shows that Cyclonus can fight, and it adds a whole new layer of fear. Up until this point, she was literally standing still, just giving monologues. Standing so still, Drax couldn't see her. So it's good to see her move around a bit. But besides that, she's never really given much to work with, and the side antagonists are kind of boring, so there's no good interactions there, and since she's so isolated, there's not too many good villain and hero interactions with her. It's called a storm engine. Imagine it. Thousand terrors wiped clean in a single blow. So taking over the world's pretty evil, right? It's really cliche, but it's still kind of evil. Cyclonus definitely earns the title of villain, but as far as what she wants to accomplish, it's kind of boring. Taking over the world and expanding this empire, it's such a played out motive, it's not really that interesting anymore. To be specific, she wants to use weather machines to conquer, and I'm not really sure why or how that would work. I don't really see people being like, oh no, it's too windy. Cyclonus, please stop. We surrender. In order to be a real top tier villain, in my opinion, you need more reason for your scheme and it needs to be interesting and fresh. With Cyclonus, one of the reasons why she might not be so popular is because nothing stands out about her plan. Her actions aren't that memorable and while she has some personality, her plan is really lacking intrigue. Failure has consequences, terrible consequences. The origin we get for Master Cyclonus at least tries a little bit, and I'll give some credit for that. However, the origin doesn't explain why she's so evil, and the play out motive doesn't really help. She has some personality, and the performance is pretty good, but the scenes she's given don't really do her any justice. Lastly, while her plan is evil, its unoriginality makes it forgettable and really not that interesting. I'm gonna give Master Cyclonus a 5. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. I make a new villain review every single Monday, and you're not going to want to miss any of them. Let me know what you think of Stormhawks and Master Cyclonus below, and as always, who should I review next? Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.